Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to be making a school backpack. In this bag measures in at 17 and a half by 13 with a five and a half inch depth. And we're going to be adding a lot of fun features onto this bag. We're going to have an upfront vertical zipper pocket. The pockets on the inside are going to be padded. And we're also using a padded speaker fabric to get those nice professional soft straps. And this project can be on the harder side, but I'm going to break it down step by step so if you are new to sewing, you should have no problem making this bag. And I'm also gonna be showing you a lot of bag making tips that you can use in other sewing projects. With all that being said, if you are new to the channel, grab that printable pattern and let's get started. Getting started with supplies, you're gonna to wanna to grab yourself one and a half yards for your main fabric, and I recommend using a heavyweight canvas, denim, or twill. These are all great fabrics that are durable and very easy to work with. You'll need one and a half yards for your secondary fabric, and this is gonna be a lining. So I recommend using any lightweight fabric because once you start layering these fabrics together, it can get pretty bulky and hard to work with. I'm actually gonna be using a nylon fabric this is a super nice fabric, especially for inside the bag. And it's also really easy to work with, lightweight, and it doesn't create a lot of bulk. You'll need a quarter yard to a yard of mesh fabric. And this is a padded speaker fabric. This is what they use on most backpack straps. And the reason it's a quarter yard to a yard is because if you use them just on the straps, you'll only need a quarter yard. But if you use them on the entire back of the bag, you'll wanna get at least a yard. And let me tell you, it really does make your bag look professional and store bought. You don't have to use a mesh material. You can use the main fabric you're already using, but I like to add this in as just a different option. And also this pocket is optional in general. You're gonna need three zippers, one 12 inch, one 14 inch, and one 28 inch. And I'm gonna be cutting mine off of a roll, so it's a lot easier to work with and you can get that precise size when you're putting these panels together. But if you are buying them from a store in an exact size, I recommend going a little bit bigger because we're actually gonna snip the ends and it's just so much easier to work with if you go past and snip a little bit in. But we'll get more into that later on. You'll need two yards of one inch webbing and this really depends on how much you're gonna use for the straps. You can get a little bit less, but I like to get at least two yards so I have enough to work with and make the straps as big as I want. We're also gonna be using this webbing with our D-rings and the hook on top, so keep that in mind. You'll need two one-inch D-rings, and again, the same goes for the D-rings. You're gonna to wanna to match it to your webbing, but the D-rings are also optional. If you don't plan on adding the lunchbox, you don't need to add the D-rings. Although you can still add them just to clip different items to, so that's another option. You'll need two one-inch strap adjusters, and this is going with the webbing. If you decide to get a different size webbing, you're gonna to wanna to change that webbing size to match the size of your strap adjuster. I'm using one inch all the way around to make it easy. You'll need 10 inches of one inch width elastic band. And this is an optional feature. It's for the water bottle pocket. So if you don't plan on adding that pocket, you can skip this supply. You'll need one yard of a quarter inch foam. And this is for the pockets on the inside of the bag and also the straps. This foam gives us extra support on those straps and overall just makes it so much nicer. But this is optional. If you don't wanna add this, you don't have to add this. Sometimes it can be hard to source a good foam, but if you have one laying around, I highly recommend using it because I'm gonna show you a few ways you can really take this bag to the next level. And lastly, you'll need one external USB interface connector. We're actually gonna be adding this on the outside of the bag, so that way we can connect a USB to it and you can charge your phone. These can be tricky to find, so I put a link down below if you're interested in adding that feature. Lastly, you're gonna need your pattern. This pattern is available at properfitclothing.com. It's super simple to use. All you have to do is download it, print it off, tape it together, and you're ready to go. And before you start taping it together, the best thing to do is to cut off the top and one of the side edges. This is gonna allow you to overlap the pages for a perfectly aligned pattern. And after you have all your supplies gathered and your pattern printed out, it's time to move into cutting. And there's also a lunchbox option for this bag. It's going to be a separate video. I'll link that video down below. And after taping your pattern together, it should look like this. For the best results, I recommend checking your printer alignment. And once you have it all taped together, we're gonna cut on the outside of the black line. Moving on to cutting, you're gonna wanna end up with two front pocket bottom zipper end panels, two front top pocket zipper end panels, one out of your main fabric and one out of your secondary fabric, two front top pencil pocket panels, 
one out of your secondary fabric and one out of your main fabric. Two front top pencil pocket bottom panels, one out of your secondary fabric and one out of your main fabric. One front mesh water bottle pocket panel cut out of your mesh material. This pocket is optional, so feel free to skip it if you don't want to add it. One to two front top pencil pocket lining panels. If you choose to add the pencil pocket, you'll need one. If you decide to skip the pencil pocket, you'll need two, one out of your main fabric and one out of your lining. Four front pocket side panels, two out of your secondary fabric and two out of your main fabric. Two front inside pocket panels cut out of your secondary fabric on the fold. One front pocket lining panel cut out of your secondary fabric on the fold. One side bottom lining panel cut out of your secondary fabric on the fold. One side bottom panel cut out of your main fabric on the fold. Two side top zipper edge panels cut out of your main fabric. Two to four side pocket panels and this is depending on whether you want to add two or one pocket. We're only adding one side pocket so we're going to need two panels. One side back zipper lining panel cut out of your secondary fabric on the fold. One side back zipper panel cut out of your main fabric on the fold. Four side front zipper panels, two cut out of your secondary fabric and two cut out of your main fabric. Two main back inside pocket panels cut out of your secondary fabric on the fold. One main back panel cut out of your main fabric on the fold. And when it comes to cutting the larger panels on the fold, you can actually reflect it if you don't have enough fold on your fabric to cut it. This is a great way to save a little bit of fabric. Four strap panels, two cut out of your padded mesh fabric and two cut out of your main fabric. And lastly, two strap bottom panels cut out of your main fabric. Moving on to construction, grab both the top and bottom zipper end panels, the secondary fabric and the main fabric. Cut a 14 inch zipper and mark it at 13 and a half inches. These are the attachment points for the zipper end panels and we wanna make sure it's gonna be the same size as our front pocket side panel. And it's always best to double check before you start sewing. These panels will be installed at both sides of the zipper and you want it to be the same height as the front pocket side panel. From here we decide which way we want the pocket to open. I like to point the front of my zipper towards the top zipper panel so the pocket opens when I pull down. Once we have the details figured out, all we have to do is sandwich the zipper in between the main fabric and the secondary fabric. Make sure the right sides are together and you have it lined up with your markings. Do this for both the top and bottom panel and then we're going to stitch at a quarter inch seam allowance. And you're going to want to take your time sewing over the zipper. And before we trim the zipper ends, we're going to flip the wrong sides together, lining the top edge up on both of the panels. Do the same thing for the opposite side. Once the panels are lined up, we're going to add a top stitch to both sides. When you finished up the top stitch, we're going to place the zipper off to the side and grab our front mesh water bottle pocket panel. This pocket is optional. If you decide to add it, we're going to find the elastic edge and we're using a one inch elastic. I would recommend going at least one inch. This gives you enough room to fold over that edge. You'll want to cut the elastic just a little bit shorter than the width of the panel. I found one to two inches shorter than the width works fairly well. This allows the pocket to stretch open and really secure your water bottle down. Once you decided on the width, it's very easy to install. All you have to do is fold it in half over the top edge and pull it to the same width as the panel. And I found the easiest way to do this is pull it as you sew it. After finishing up the stitch, give it a few stretches. If it's looking good and that mesh is all sewn in, you can place it off to the side and grab your front pocket side panels. We will only need one main fabric and one secondary fabric to start. I'll be using the left side because this is the side I want my water bottle pocket on. Line the water bottle pocket up on the bottom edge of the main fabric. If you're not adding the pocket, then don't worry about it. Grab your zipper with the end panels. Line it up with the right edge and place the right sides together. Place your secondary fabric directly on top. Sandwiching the zipper in between both layers, add a few pins to make sure nothing is moving around as you're sewing, and stitch at a quarter inch seam allowance. Feel free to use a zipper presser foot if that works best for you. Open up the panel and flip the wrong sides together, lining up the main fabric and the secondary fabric. Grab the opposite sides of your front side pocket panel and repeat the previous steps. Place the right side of the zipper to the right side of the main fabric and the secondary fabric directly on top. Add a couple pins to keep everything lined up and stitch at a quarter inch seam allowance. Flip the wrong sides together, lining up the outside edge. And you're going to want to do this for both sides. We're pulling the panels away from the zipper so the outside edges line up. 
and this is going to help us align the zipper edge so we can add a top stitch. We'll be adding a top stitch to both sides of the zipper. Take your time and try to make it as neat as possible. After finishing up the top stitch, place this panel off to the side and cut two 4 inch strips of webbing. Going along with the webbing, we'll need two D-rings, feed the webbing through both of the D-rings so the webbing is even on both sides. Using the pattern, we're going to locate the placement points and this is to add the lunchbox. If you're not adding the lunchbox, you can skip this step. We'll be adding it on the opposite side to our water bottle pocket and you pretty much just have to remember that it's in the center of the panel. Pin the webbing strips to the placement points. You want about a half inch hanging past the edge. With them lined up and secured down, we're going to stitch as close as we can to the outside edge. And this is primarily just to keep them in place so it's easier to attach the side panels later. Place the panels off to the side and grab our front top pencil pocket panels. And there's two ways of doing this. If you're not going to add the pencil pocket, we're going to start with that technique first. Grab your two main front pocket main top panels, line them up with the top edge of our front pocket assembly, place the right sides of the main fabric together and the right sides of the secondary fabric together. We'll be sandwiching the front pocket assembly in between both of these panels. From here, all we have to do is stitch at a quarter inch seam allowance. And next, we're going to show you how to add the pencil holder. So grab the front top pencil pocket, both top and bottom panels. Cut your zipper longer than the width of both of the panels. We'll be starting with the top panel, so grab the secondary fabric, place it on the wrong side of the zipper with right sides together, and do the same thing on the opposite side with the main fabric. Stitch at a quarter inch seam allowance. Flip the wrong sides together, lining up the top edge. Add a few pins to keep it out of the way. And with it out of the way, we're gonna grab the bottom section, locate the zipper edge, and place it directly across from the top panel, lining up the centers. Just like the top, we're gonna sandwich it in between the zipper with right sides together. When you have it centered with the top panel, we're gonna stitch at a quarter inch seam allowance. After completing the stitch, we're gonna flip the wrong sides together. Make sure you line up the bottom edge. We're gonna be finishing the side curve with the zipper, so if everything lines up, we're good to move on to top stitching. Just like the previous steps, we're gonna top stitch both sides of the zipper, and take your time, try to make it as neat as possible. With our top stitches done, we're going to move on to adding it to our pocket assembly. So grab your front top pencil pocket lining panel. And if everything was sewn correctly, it should resemble the same curve as our lining panel. You can always place it over top to double check. We'll be placing it on the top edge of our front pocket assembly. Place the right sides together, lining up the top and bottom edge. Do the same thing for the secondary fabric on the opposite side. Sandwiching the front pocket assembly in between both of the panels and stitch at a quarter inch seam allowance. Flip both of the panels up so the wrong sides are together. And it's very important to make sure both of the top edges line up. And from here, we're going to be adding a top stitch on the pencil pocket side directly on top of the seam allowance. Lastly, trim the zipper ends to match the curve of the lining. And this is why we wait to trim these zipper ends so that way we can really dial it in and match it up with the back lining panel. And that's going to complete our front pocket assembly. Feel free to add more pockets or switch it up. But for now, you can place it off to the side and grab our front inside pocket panel. We will be using both to start, so place the right sides together. I'm going to be adding a foam insert. This is great for laptops and iPads. It adds a little bit of protection. If you're adding it, make sure it's offset about an inch on the bottom and side edges. Line up all of the top edges and stitch at a quarter inch seam allowance. Grab your two inside pocket panels, flip the wrong sides together. Flatten out the top edge so it's lined up and even on both sides. With all of the outside edges, Edges lined up and looking nice we're gonna add two stitches along the top edge this will help keep everything from moving around and also give it a nice look double check to make sure the foam insert is still offset place this panel off to the side and grab your front pocket lining panel before we get started you're gonna want to locate the top and bottom edge we're gonna be placing the inside pocket panel on the bottom edge it should line up perfectly. If you're having troubles, just double check to make sure you're on the correct side of the lining panel. With the pocket panel lined up and pinned down to the lining panel, stitch around the outside edge as close as you can to that edge. The main goal is to set it so that way it doesn't move around once we start attaching the panels together. And we're going to be placing the inside pocket directly behind the front pocket assembly with right sides facing up. Be sure to pull the elastic to the outside edge and once you have everything lined up, we're going to sew directly on that edge all the way around. And the main goal is to combine these layers into one so it's easier to sew the side panels on in future steps. 
double check to make sure you got all the layers sewn together. If you add the elastic water bottle pocket, check the top, see if it opens far enough so that you can fit a water bottle because you can always take it in just a little bit before we move on to the next step. Other than that, it's going to complete your entire front pocket assembly, and from here you can place this panel off to the side and grab your side back zipper panel. The first thing we're going to do is add the USB connector, and you can actually add this on either side of the bag. Depending on the connector you're using, it may be a different size, so I would just trace the outside edge of your connector for the best results. I'm going to be adding mine on the right side, so I'm going to reflect the pattern to the opposite side but feel free to add the connector on the right or the left side. We will be using the placement guide on the pattern, but we're actually gonna be tracing our connector. So place the connector in the guide and trace around just the top of that connector because we only want the top to be poking out of our panel. I think it works best when the USB is pointing down, so also keep that in mind when you're tracing the top. Cut the traced area and pop your connector through the hole. Since the fabric I'm using frays a lot, I'm going to cut out a little bit of vinyl to place around the outside edge to prevent any fraying in the future. Once you cut yours out, just slide it on around the USB connector and stitch around the outside edge. I'm going to be gluing mine down before I sew so that way it's not moving around and I can get a nice clean stitch all the way around that outside edge. Place a little glue around the outside of your connector, slide on your cover, and let the glue set. After the glue is set, we're gonna stitch around the outside edge. I'm actually gonna be using a zigzag stitch directly on top of that edge. And I'm using a zigzag stitch to cover up that edge and give it just a nice little look. And it's really that simple to add a little bit of tech to your bag. From here, we're gonna mark out the zipper cover fold guides, place the pattern on top of your panel and mark out guides on both sides. Grab the side back zipper lining panel, find the zipper edge, point it to the zipper edge of your side back zipper panel, cut the zipper longer than the width of both of these panels. With your zipper cut, we're gonna place it on the right side of the main fabric, lining it up on the zipper edge. Place the lining panel directly on top with the right sides facing the wrong side of the zipper and stitch at a quarter inch seam allowance. Adding a couple pins will help keep everything aligned as you're sewing. Then we're going to open it up, flip the wrong sides together, and before we fold out the guides, we're going to place it off to the side and grab our side front zipper panels. Place the panels on both sides of the zipper, making sure it's lined up exactly with the panel on the opposite side. Using the zipper edge, we're going to place the right side of the main fabric on top and the right side of the secondary fabric on the opposite side. After aligning the panels, we're going to stitch at a quarter inch seam allowance. After stitching, flip the wrong sides together, lining up the outside edge. Place a couple pins to secure the panels down and add a top stitch to both of the panels. I'm using an edge presser foot to help me get nice even stitches throughout the bag. Next, we're gonna separate the lining panel from the main panel and make sure the seam allowance is pointing down towards the lining panel and add a top stitch all the way through that lining panel on the zipper edge. This is gonna be on the back side of the zipper, so try to keep it as even as possible. Keeping the lining separate from the main panel, we're gonna fold the zipper down Locate the fold guides we marked out in previous steps. Using the guides, we're gonna pinch and pull the fabric so it folds over the zipper. The front marking should be at the start of the fold and the back marking should be at the back of the zipper. Place a few pins to secure the panels down and sew a perfectly straight line connecting the back two markings. If done correctly, the fold should cover the zipper and the stitch should be directly at the back. And to finish off the USB connector, we're gonna add a rubber flap on the inside lining panel. We're gonna be placing this directly behind the USB connector. So flip the panel to the lining side, find where your connector sits, and place the flap directly over top of the connector. It's best to mark it out so you have some guidelines to sew it back on. And all you have to do next is just sew around the outside edge. I'm using a standard straight stitch. The cover I'm using has a little groove and I'm just trying to stay within that groove. Once you have the rubber flap sewn on, you can cut the slit out of the middle so the wire can feed through. And since my lining fabric doesn't fray, I don't have to worry about creating a buttonhole or anything to prevent fraying. Lastly, grab the wire, feed it through, make sure everything lines up. If everything lines up, you can take the wire out, place it off to the side because we're gonna be adding it at the end of the project. Next, grab your side pocket panels. I'm only adding one side pocket, so I have one main fabric and one secondary fabric. Find the top edge on both of the panels, place the right sides together, lining up the top edge and stitch at a quarter inch seam allowance. Flip the wrong side together, making sure you keep that top edge lined up. 
Place a couple pins and add a top stitch about a quarter inch away from the edge. Feel free to add more or even add a decorative stitch. Place it off to the side and grab your side top zipper edge panel and your side bottom panel. Starting with the side bottom panel, open it up so the right side is facing up. Grab the side top zipper edge panel, locate the front and back edge. Do the same thing for the side bottom panel. Place the side top zipper panels to the left and right of the side bottom panel. Grab the side pocket that you just assembled. We're adding ours on the right side of the bag, so we're going to place it on the right side of the side bottom panel with the right sides together. If you're adding two pockets, you would place one on the other side, and then we're going to bring in those top zipper panels with the right sides together, lining up the side edges and stitch at a quarter inch seam allowance. Open up the panel so the right sides are facing up. Point the seam allowance towards the center of the side bottom panel and add a top stitch by sewing directly on top of the seam allowance. And if you wanted to add a second side pocket, you would just do the same thing on the opposite side and have side pockets on both of these panels. Place it off to the side and grab your side bottom lining panel. If everything was done correctly, the side bottom lighting panel should be the same width and same height as the side bottom panel we just created. So find the front and back edge on all of the panels. Grab your complete top side panel and do the same thing. Locate all of the edges so you place them correctly. And we put the pocket on this side so the USB would point down towards the pocket. So what we want to do is sandwich the zipper assembly in between the lining and the main fabric. I like to start by placing the right side of the lining on the back in my main fabric over top. And just remember to keep the pocket out of the way, so flip it back, place a couple pins, and do the same thing for the opposite side. The zipper assembly is a different length, so you're gonna wanna pull some of it back so all the edges line up correctly. Add a couple pins and stitch both sides at a quarter inch seam allowance. Take your time going over the zippers and after completing it, you can snip the zipper ends flush with the seam allowance. Flip the right sides out and double check the side seams to make sure all the layers got sewn together. Pull the bottom side panels away from the zipper panel and add a top stitch. Repeat this process for the opposite side. For the side with the side pocket, you're going to want to pull the pocket out of the way of the stitch. After adding the top stitch to both sides, we're going to flip it back over to the side with the pocket, fold the pocket up flat. To keep it from moving around, we're going to stitch both edges as close as we can to the side. Depending on the fabric you're using, it can get a little bit bulky, so just take your time as you sew. And from here, we can place this panel off to the side and grab our strap panels. I'm going to be using a padded mesh fabric on the back of the strap. This is a very common material used on most backpack straps that adds a little bit of cushion for an overall more comfortable fit. There's a few different ways we can make these straps, but to start, we're going to place the right sides together. The first way is stitching all the way around the outside edge, leaving the top edge open. And this is the simplest technique. All you have to do is flip the right sides out and your strap is complete. The second technique is the one that we're going to be doing and we're going to find the edge opposite of the outside edge and we're going to stitch just that edge on both straps. This technique is a little more complex, but overall it's going to make a more quality, stronger strap. Make sure you're stitching at a quarter inch seam allowance and from here we're going to flip the wrong sides together. Flip the strap so the right sides are facing up and add a top stitch to both of the side edges that we just stitched. This stitch is also going to help with keeping that panel nice and flat so it's not flapping around when they're resting on your shoulders. After finishing up the top stitch, double check to make sure the side edges are still lined up correctly. And with them lined up, we're going to add double fold bias tape to the outside edge and I'm going to show you a few different techniques. The first method is using a bias tape making kit and this is where you make your own bias tape. It's super simple to do. You cut your bias tape strips, feed it through your folder and press it as it's coming out your folder. And by picking this method, you get to choose the size and also the color of fabric to match your project. The second method is using a double fold bias tape binder. You install this to your machine and it gives you the ability to sew directly onto your garment. It's a very fast and effective technique. The third technique is using pre-made bias tape. This technique you're very limited to colors but it's easy to do. You just fold it over your edge and stitch it down. This is a great way to go if you don't have a lot of tools to work with. And I'm going to be stitching mine on using the double fold bias tape attachment. By far this is one of the best techniques if you're planning on making a lot of bags. But feel free to use whatever method that works best for you. And remember to leave at least three to four inches past the bottom of the strap because we're going to fold it back up and that's where we're going to place our strap adjuster. But before we add the strap adjuster, we're going to cut a piece of foam that's smaller than the width of our strap but has the same curved shape. We want this foam insert to easily slide into the top of our strap. 
This is optional. It's going to add more cushion and padding to that strap if you're carrying heavy loads. If you do add it, make sure you offset it about two inches from the top of the strap. The next stage of the strap, we're going to be cutting two six inch strips of one inch webbing. Going along with the webbing, we'll need two one inch strap adjusters. Feed the webbing through the strap adjuster from the bottom opening back up through the top opening. The front side webbing should be a little bit longer than the back. And simply fold the webbing ends towards each other to the inside of the strap adjuster. This will clean up the raw ends and give you enough room to stitch. Grab your strap panels and we're going to place it at the bottom end of the strap. Fold the bias tape up and cover the bias tape with your webbing. And you mainly want to make sure that bias tape end is covered. Repeat the same thing for the opposite strap, making sure both of them are lined up in the exact same spot. I'm just going to be doing a standard box stitch all the way around that webbing and getting as close to the adjuster as I can. Feel free to add a couple more stitches, one going across, maybe even an X stitch to really secure that webbing down. And that's going to complete the top portion of our strap. You can place these off to the side and grab our strap bottom panels. The first thing we're going to do is locate the bottom edge that has a quarter inch seam allowance. Fold that bottom edge up to the quarter inch seam allowance notch, then fold it in half the opposite way on the center guide. This is a technique we're using for both of the panels, but before we stitch, we're going to cut two 12 inch strips of one inch webbing. You can cut these longer if you want more adjustment, but we're going to place them directly on our center fold, making sure the webbing doesn't stick out past the panel. Repeat this for the opposite strap and we're going to stitch directly on the outside edge as close as we can to that edge. I like to pull it back out and do one more security stitch down the center of the panel. Typically, the more stitches you add, the stronger it will be with these straps. Moving on, we're going to grab the main back inside pocket panels. We're going to assemble this pocket the same way we did the front inside pocket, so place the right sides together, lining up the top edge on both of our panels. And the same goes for this pocket. If you'd like to add a foam insert for padding for a laptop, you're going to want to offset it about an inch to an inch and a half all the way around that panel. After finishing the stitch on the top edge, we're going to flip the wrong sides together, lining up the top edge so it's even on both sides. Place a few pins on the top edge, and lastly, add one to two top stitches, securing everything down. And you mainly want to make sure the outside edges are still lined up after you're done sewing. Place your complete pocket off to the side and grab your main back panel. Open up the main back panel and make sure the bottom edge is facing towards you. Flip the panel over so the wrong side is facing up. Grab your completed inside pocket and line it up with the bottom edge. Just like we did the inside front pocket, we're going to stitch around the outside edge as close as we can to that edge. Double check, make sure all the layers got stitched together. Flip this panel over so the right side is facing up. Grab your bottom strap panels and place them just after the curve on the bottom edge. Make sure they're perfectly in line with one another. Grab your strap panels, place them on the top edge, match them up with the curve on the top. You should have about a two and a half to three inch gap in between. Cut an eight inch strip of one inch webbing and we're going to be using this for the handle and place it directly on the inside edge of our straps. With it symmetrical on both sides, pin everything down and stitch as close as you can to the outside edge, locking all the strap panels down. Do one final check after stitching to make sure it's symmetrical on both sides. Place the complete back panel off to the side and grab your complete front assembly. Mark the centers on both top and bottom. Repeat the same process for our complete side panel. Find the front edge on our complete side panel and we're going to line the top up with the top marking and the bottom up with the bottom marking. And it's very key to have correct center markings because this is going to be the alignment for the entire bag. I highly recommend pinning all the way around the outside edge and once you have it pinned down, we're going to start at the bottom and stitch all the way around the outside edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. And make sure both sides are feeding through your machine even so that way one side is not longer than the other. After finishing up the stitch, we're going to snip any excess webbing. Check to make sure all the layers got stitched together. It's best to flip the right sides out to do this check so you're nice and thorough. And to clean up that raw edge, we added double fold bias tape. We use the same technique we used in previous steps. Overall, this is going to add strength, durability, and really make those edges pop out. As you can see, the bag is starting to come together, so make sure it's inside out. Grab your complete back panel. Mark the centers on both top and bottom. After marking the centers, we're going to place the right sides together, lining up the bottom mark with the bottom mark and the top mark with the top mark. 
And once everything is lined up, add pins all the way around the outside edge and repeat the same process. Stitch at a quarter inch starting from the bottom and working all the way back around towards that start mark. The same goes for this step. You really want to make sure both of those layers are going through evenly or else you're going to end up with one side longer than the other creating a ripple. And adjusting your machine to a thicker fabric definitely will help. After completing the stitch, we're going to double check to make sure all the layers got sewn together. Trim up any webbing that's sticking past the seam allowance and from here we're going to add our double fold bias tape. You can skip the double fold bias tape, but it's going to make for a bag that lasts way longer and looks way nicer. Pull the right sides out and flip the bag around to the back side so we can finish off the straps. Grab the strap ends from the strap bottom panels and we're going to feed those ends up through the strap adjuster from the middle opening down to the bottom opening. With the strap end pulled through we're going to roll the end over twice and add a tack stitch. Repeat the same process for both strap ends and this is going to prevent that strap from sliding back through the adjuster. And simply pull the ends and it adjusts the straps. That's going to complete the back straps. The last little thing I want to show you is how to make a simple zipper pull. I made these ones out of leather and a double sided rivet. All you have to do is cut a small strip of leather, fold it in half, cut notches on the folded edge, punch a hole in the center and add your double sided rivet. It's super quick and adds a great look. If you did add the USB connector, don't forget to add the wire and you can just feed that in through the inside. With your wire connected, the final final step is adding your branding and I always like to add mine all around the bag and I make mine like a loop so I can clip things to them. Don't forget if you did add the D-rings, it's for a lunchbox. The lunchbox is a separate video. It will be linked down in the description below. So if you want to make that to go along with your backpack, click that link below for the short detailed video. And there you have it, your school backpack is complete. Thank you so much for watching and supporting the channel. Hopefully your bag turned out good. And again, if it didn't turn out perfect the first try, these can take some time. This pattern has a lot of different panels. So getting all those to align correctly can be challenging. So I recommend just trying it over and over until you perfect that design. Because once you get a design like this down, you can transfer all that skill into other bags and it just keeps getting easier and easier. And if you ever have any questions about the pattern or how to put it together, send me a message on my website at properfitclothing.com and I'll get back to you. But I'm gonna keep the videos coming at you, so I'll see you next time.